So real quick before the video starts, if you guys enjoy it, remember to leave a like. If you want to see more like it, remember to subscribe. Today's video is going to be one that I think a lot of people have been looking forward to. A lot of people have been anticipating this one, and it's going to be how to rebirth faster, giving some general tips and advice on rebirthing, some useful information, and some, some tips to just become a better Miner's Haven player in general. Now, there are a couple things this video is not going to be. It's not going to have any specifics for the current meta. It's not going to be showing any specific setups or anything like that. Nothing wrong with that style of video, but I personally don't like doing direct set of videos for you to just copy. I don't like that style of video. Instead, this is going to be more just tips and information that you can use to better yourself as a player so you can build your own setups. I also tried to include some tips that would be useful for more players than just high life people. A lot of the tips are focused towards high life players, but I do have some information in here that would be more useful for some of the newer players to the game, some stuff that people might find helpful if you're early on in the game or if you're a little bit newer and you're just trying to figure things out. So hopefully, regardless of where you're at in the game, you find something useful from this video. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get into some of the tips. Now, this first tip is probably one that a lot of people already do, one that a lot of people probably already know, but for those of you who don't already use it, the wiki is an extremely helpful resource, and using that and understanding what items do will be a huge help in becoming a better player. Like, just understanding the specific details and exactly what items do will will help to make you a much better player. It may not seem like much, but just, just that basic understanding of things it goes a long way and is a huge help. It may seem obvious to some people, some of you may think it's unnecessary, but it really does make a big difference. That's one of the things that I did early on that really helped me. I was constantly checking the wiki. Every time I got a new rebirth item, I was looking up what it did, looking up its exact stats, looking back at old items, looking at stats, keeping up with uh, with changes and all of that. And it, it makes a big difference. You may not think it, but it, it really helps. So if you're newer and you don't know what a lot of stuff does, use the wiki. Another general tip that is useful for newer players and sometimes for even longtime players this one also may seem obvious to some of you, but just don't be afraid to ask people questions. Try and try and surround yourself with other good players, look at what they're doing, how they're playing the game, and just, just be in different communities. Pay attention to the meta and changes, keep up with updates and all that, keep up with what what good players are using. Seeing what good players use, all that good stuff, asking questions, all of those things can be really helpful. You can get some pretty good insight into why certain people do certain things, and you can get some pretty useful information that way. Now, I will say, don't don't just don't just go around asking people to build you setups. Nobody nobody likes it when people do that. Nobody likes the people who are just going Hey, can you build me a scent setup, please? I really need help, please. I, can you just build me a, a cool scent setup? Hey, thanks. People don't like that. J if you've got genuine questions, though, most people aren't going to be worried about answering them. And I usually try and respond to DMs as well. So if you have questions for me or any other experienced players, just uh, just send me over a DM. I'll try and get to it. But if you ask me to build you a setup, I will ignore you. One other general tip that a lot of people, I think, may find a little bit obvious but is still pretty important is just spending a lot of time in game playing the game getting an understanding of items getting a feel for things experimenting and understanding how things work and why certain mechanics work how they do why certain setups are better than others and why they work it may seem obvious but one of the one of the biggest things is just spending a lot of time and kind of understanding how everything works that's another thing i've played this game for a long time i've spent a lot of hours working on setups and that that has gone a long way in helping me to understand how setups are going to work why they're going to work all that good stuff May seem kind of obvious, may seem kind of like a, well, that's really a non-tip, whatever, but it really does help. Just spending a lot of time in the game, experimenting, and not letting yourself get discouraged when stuff doesn't work first try. So those were more of just kind of some outside-of-the-game mentality type tips. Now let's start talking a little bit more about Miner's Haven specifically and some uh, more useful in-game tips. Now, first of all, very important, life skipping is pretty generally just going to be faster. If you can skip 20 lives and do it in a reasonable amount of time, that's going to be faster than doing lower no skips. But that being said, if you're a lower life and you're on second sacrifice or third sacrifice, depending on when you're watching this, doing a, doing 20 skips early on is a bad idea. It may be faster, but early on you want to try and get as many items as you can. You want to set yourself up for later in the game. So I would recommend not skipping early in the game. It is faster, and once you get into a certain point, I would say around high thousands, maybe close to 10k. That's when I would say you can start skipping around 20 and be fine, and that'll be faster for you. But before then, I would recommend not doing any big skips. Another uh, another smaller tip for people in the early game if you're if you're able to doing no money setups can be a decent bit faster having to having to do a sell setup to get money is a is a slight slowdown so if you're able to get away with no money that helps 
And if you're at that point where you can do no money, then you're probably not going to be using any cannons or anything, so I would say use a faster conveyors before slow conveyors. Try and keep things relatively short so that ores don't have a long way to travel. And that'll be, that'll be very helpful for you if you can just use faster conveyors before slow conveyors. But that being said, at a certain point, that really isn't all that worth doing anymore, because cannons are much, much faster, and they're probably always going to be faster. Now, the regular ore cannon really isn't all that good, but the railgun cannon and the ore glider are both very, very power powerful. Both of these items are going to be huge for increasing your speed. If you use these in setups, you'll be a lot better off. Now, which you actually want to use kind of comes down to you. Uh, if you're below wave 8,000, obviously, where you can get the railgun cannon, you're going to have to use the collider, but the collider is technically slightly faster, but the railgun cannon can be a lot more consistent. It has the centering ability, so I would probably recommend using this thing. It's what I use. But the ore collider can actually be quite useful as well, and one tip to actually making the ore collider work well, you have to use the Molten Forge, or something that'll make your ores a little bit heavier, but if you do that, it'll make it much more controllable. Then just use something like a gravitational gearwork above it with the Molten Forge, and then your ores will zoom through the lines. And with the Railgun Cannon, if you want, you can use Hydraulics. You don't need to use a Molten Forge or anything. You can just send ores with or without Hydraulics. It's really pretty easy to use and it'll make your lines a lot faster. So whichever one you want to use, it's kind of up to you, but both of them have their benefits. Both are good. I recommend the Railgun Cannon if you're at the life. And the these are going to be your best friends in the in the mid and late game. Cannons are a huge, massive help for setup speeds. Now a couple of quick little tips. Uh, portable upgraders are extremely good, and if you have any, you should use them in pretty much any setup of yours. There's some shop portables that you can use, stuff like the ion fields, the orbital upgraders, the portable UFO thing. Extremely powerful, essentially free upgrades. They make a they make a small difference, but they really help and they don't add any time on. Another quick small tip for optimization is making a money layout that you can load and then having it placed so that you can load your main setup without having to move anything. Now this is a this is a super small tip. It's a it's a minimal time save, but it does make a difference. If you have a money layout, you're going to be increasing the speed that you can load setups in. You're not going to have to worry about placing anything down manually, and then you also don't have to worry about withdrawing everything. So it can it can save a good few seconds every single time you rebirth, which adds up after time. And that leads me into my my next point, which is that uh, manual resetters are quite a bit faster than any automatic lines. This is another small tip, another little small time save, but it can be a pretty significant difference. Now the way this works is you let your ores go through the setup, they go through the Tesla, and then you just move the teleporter. Once they go through the Daystrophy, you move it again. Once they go through the final upgrader, you move it again, and then after they go through there, you move it over to here. Obviously this does have a pretty significant downside of requiring a lot more focus, being manual of course, so if you enjoy the automatic aspect more, then that could definitely be worthwhile. But if you're worried about speed and optimization, this does make a pretty huge difference. For example, my setup that is the exact same as this one, which uses just a normal automatic resetter line, that setup averages anywhere from 1.05 minutes to 1.10, 1.15 minutes. And this setup, just by using manual Tesla, just by switching to manual Tesla, it's able to get sub-minute guaranteed every time. It's a lot more consistent. It gets around 50 to 55 seconds. It's even gotten sub-50 at times. And all I changed was the, the Tesla, so it makes a pretty huge difference difference. Obviously it requires more focus so it's up to you to decide which you would rather have the significant speed increase or just the automation. And now we get into what I would consider to be some of the most important tips of this video. These are more important for high life players but they can still be good for low life players as well. First of all, some of the upgraders that you may think are good might not actually be the best for you. Some upgraders that have the biggest multipliers aren't always going to be the go-to upgraders. It may sound odd at first, like obviously you would want to use just the, the biggest multiplier upgrade why would you want to why would you want to not use the best items but in a lot of cases the biggest multipliers aren't actually the best for you now obviously there are some scenarios where having the bigger multiplier items are gonna be better there are some items that have big multipliers and are also quite good for setups quite space efficient but some items just aren't worthwhile like for example the Trinity the Trinity you can get a pretty huge multiplier from if you use all three you can get a 5400 multiplier but if you weren't able to use them underneath platforms they really wouldn't be worth using the space that they take Take up is too much for the multiplier that they give. They give a big multiplier, but you can you can do a lot better by using different upgraders for the same amount of space. Like this setup also doesn't have the optic origin in it at all because it's just too big for the multiplier. It's kind of an inconsistent item. It requires special care to use, and for what it gives, it's a little bit too big, and you can just do better with other upgraders in the space. 
So it may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but a lot of upgraders just aren't going to be the best for you. Now, if you want to be able to figure out what upgraders are actually the most space efficient and the best to use, I've got a spreadsheet linked in the description. This was made by Rhea X. Big shout out to him. This is a super, super helpful spreadsheet. It's got some super useful information on what items are the best, what upgraders are the most space efficient, and give you the most multiplier per the space they take up. So yeah, making sure you, uh, you know what items are actually the most space efficient is pretty pretty crucial to setups like this. If you're trying to optimize and get down to the least lines possible, you need to be very space efficient, and that's a huge focus. Like, some items that have big multipliers just aren't going to be the best for you, and some that you might not think to use are actually going to be pretty helpful for you. Space efficiency makes a big difference, and you, if you can, you want to try and get down to as few lines as possible. And of course, the same thing goes for mines as well. The mines that just have the highest ore value or the the most benefits, quote unquote, slapped onto them aren't always going to be the best for you. Like, as of right now, stuff like the Havia mine and the Gargantium mine, even though they have better ore value and are both pretty powerful mines, they're just not worth using at the moment. Obviously, that could change, so like I said before, pay attention to the meta and changes and all that. But as of right now, people have been using the Draconic Glass mine because it just has more benefits. It's remote, you can uh, get your ores in faster, which helps increase speed. It's still got pretty good ore value, and it's a lot more consistent to use with the Railgun. Stuff like the Havium and Gargantium mine are a lot more inconsistent and a little bit more annoying and time-consuming to use. Yeah, similar thing with mines. The best ore value isn't always going to be the best mine. There are other benefits to weigh, so make sure you know what you're choosing, why you're using a certain mine. And yeah, if there's, if there's one important thing to take away from this video, I would say it's understanding what items do and space efficiency. Those are the those are the most important aspects of building a fast setup, in my opinion. Cutting down your lines as much as possible and using the best upgraders given the space that they take up. And of course, just understanding what everything does. But yeah, that's all of the tips that I've got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. I'm sure some of you probably won't be happy that this wasn't just a, just a setup for you to copy or anything like that, but I would much rather just give general tips, helpful stuff like that. Things that, if you take into consideration and actually use, will make you a better player in the end. So I hope you guys are actually able to take these tips, implement them, build better setups for yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you everyone for watching. I know content has been a little bit slow recently. I'm gonna try and get back on to making content daily if I can. I'd like to start getting daily videos out again. I'll be playing Astral Excursion soon, probably trying to make more Miner's Haven content, playing a couple other spin-off MH type games, probably Arsenal as well at some point. So hopefully you guys look forward to that. Anyway, I'm gonna head out now, stop rambling and all that, so peace out everyone.